Lorax! We open in Thneedville as the credits roll, a town made completely out of plastic and where no trees exist at all. I'd like to thank this film for making me realize how sick I am of over-the-top, upbeat musical intros. Sorry, opening to the Muppets movie, I have to hate you now. <laughs> Blame this movie! So we see a Gap Kids commercial meet up with an Abercrombie and Fitch commercial voiced by timeless acting giants Zac Efron and Taylor Swift. Oh, hi, Ted. Oh, hey, Audrey. Hi. Wow, that is not the voice I expected to come out of that kid. You know, because a 12-year-old boy should always be voiced by a 26-year-old man, right? All right, cool. Hey, I gotta run. I gotta go do a thing. So, uh, I'll see you guys. I'm pretty sure that's how they did in the Iron Giant, isn't it? Hey, Dean! Watch this! Banzai! Uh, come on in! The, 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 the water's great! No, thanks. <laughs> you weenie! It turns out this girl is an artist who paints pictures of trees and dreams one day being able to see a real one. If a guy somehow got you one... Well, I'd probably marry him on the spot. I bet that sounds crazy. Does that sound crazy? Well, that depends. Do you mean it literally? Or do you have a good sense of humor? Or nothing else is going to be revealed about you in this movie, is it? Here, just a bland piece of who asked to get his truffle growing so he can set out on this movie's hypocritical quest, aren't you? And people said that the touch of their tufts was softer than anything. Well, any other cliché characters, or as I like to call them, cliché occurs, you like to get out early in the movie? Oh! The hip rocking granny! Okay, okay, any others? Disco! <laughs> the embarrassing parent! Painful, very painful. Any others? The more smog in the sky, the more people will buy! Oh, yeah. oh. Of course, the corporate bad guy who owns the town with no redeeming elements whatsoever. You could call him the missing Captain Planet villain, Sheffy. How can I possibly make even more money? <laughs> we can tell you, sir. We can tell you. Why, he's so evil, he wants to actually sell fresh air to people because their pollution is already destroying the air that they have. Um, Spaceballs did it? I make a living selling fresh air to people. Trees? Oh, they make it for free. I consider it kind of a threat to my business. Okay, first of all, if you're gonna steal Edna Mode's design sheet, pick a voice that matches. Those vocals match about as well as... Oh, hey, Audrey. That. Second, isn't the idea of the Lorax that there is no real bad guy? It's just a cautionary tale of when someone, anyone, takes too much without seeing it? Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. So many Trump watches the boy leave the town to find a tree, leading him, of course, to the home of the Wunzler. Well, there went the surprise of the powerful line that closed out the original. Oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna assume nothing in this film is gonna move me at all. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you and what are you doing here? My god, we finally found Bill Watterson! Oh, you wanna know about trees? About what happened to them? Why they're all gone? So the Wunzler, of course, tells the story about what happened to all the trees, naturally keeping his face hidden throughout the story so, like I said before, he can represent how this can happen to anyone. Anyone watching right now- Fuck you, 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 fuck you! Maybe I'm over-exaggerating. After all, it is an hour and a half long movie. An hour and a half is a long time to go without seeing your Kinda main character. I mean, it's an adaptation. I got it. There's gonna have to be changes from an adaptation. Fair enough. At the very least, they're making him timeless. Somebody that everyone can look back on years later and not laugh at for being so incredibly dated and dumb. I'm gonna chop one down and make my th I don't care for that. <sighs> this Wunzler is a super young, electric guitar playing, tight clothes wearing, fedora hat toting, pop cultural referencing, Zach Braff! Ing! Completely dated product of the times. Na, 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 na. Oh, I got a little jingle. Uh, no. 
gonna blow some minds. whoop it up up Yeah, see? Hey, yeah, no, uh, no. What's his problem? I'm just saying. Weirdo. Bull fucking shit. So the onceler. <laughs> oh, shut up. Comes across a landfill with trees and... Painfully obvious minion backwash. <laughs> as he starts to chop them all down for his new business. Little did I know that by chopping down that tree, I had just summoned a mystical creature as old as time itself. The Danny DeVito cameo! Of course, the Lorax is in one of the trees as all the characters circle around the chopped down life to mourn its loss. That's actually a very touching moment that fits the spirit of the book. It's new, it's different, but it keeps to the message, love, and even kind of subtlety of what Seuss was going for. How do they fuck it up? Well, clearly we can make the message much more powerful by adding in Mission Impossible homages. A dozen more of those minion moments. Bottom. <laughs> and the non-violent pacifist Lorax of the original now tried to drown our hero in the hope that that'll lead him away. Oh, and don't forget a few more lame-ass pop cultural references. Why aren't you like other kids? Break dancing and playing the Donkey Kongs. So Donkey Kong is now officially part of the Dr. Seuss canon? I don't know how to feel about that. So the Wilford Brimley Oompa Loompa feels bad about almost drowning the once lurk. <laughs> Shut up! So he makes it up to him by tearing the shit out of his new home. And it was cold outside, and we just fell asleep. Okay, I put my lips on the... Ew! What's for breakfast? Breakfast is overrated. Hey, why do you have one of these? You don't even have a mustache. Yes, teaching lessons about staying out of others' environments is made much stronger by invading your environment. I got work to do. Yep, I gotta go into town and sell my thneed. So the one slur... DON'T MAKE ME IMPALE YOU! Makes a deal with the Lorax that he won't cut down any more trees and that the one he got is enough to sell his product called the Thneed. Hey, cool hat. Oh my gosh, I totally want one. That thing makes me like you more. Ah, how advertisers thought marketing for the Lorax would work. And sadly did work. And there went my enjoyment for the upbeat Lego movie song. Blame this movie! It's the one that made me realize it was being overused! I should point out that it does sometimes cut back to our main lead still suffering from bland millennial-itis, but they're so rushed and so generic that you forget about them just as soon as you watch them. I think the most that happens is the man paints over Flower Girl's artwork. Why? What's that even supposed to accomplish? Is that really gonna make such a big difference? It's kind of like saying, oh, you want to see Elsa and Jack Frost together? Well, what if we just put a giant axe over your fan art? Now you'll never ever want to see them again as long as you live, will you? Will you? <laughs> so the Wunzler's family comes out to live with him, and once again, it's not the Wunzler himself who's consumed by productivity. That would make him interesting, identifiable, and complex. No, it's just his evil family that eggs him on. So, I guess as long as you don't have one of those, this could never happen to you. We could always start chopping down the trees. But... No buts, Wancy. You're running a business now. You have to do what's best for the company and your mama. Even his progression seems hastily rushed. The original was good at showing the Wunzler debate himself, but then always find an excuse to keep going bigger. And even the story never claimed that going to another extreme was the answer. Well, what do you want? I should shut down my factory, fire a hundred thousand workers. I see your point. But I wouldn't know the answer. It was trying to find that middle row that wasn't victimless, but was the best compromise we could come up with. Here, one song and BOOM! Overnight douche! How bad can I be? I'm just building the economy. Instead of slowly but surely over the course of the film, we see the progression of all these choices and the effect that it's having. It's just one song! Anakin Skywalker's transition was more complex. And the PR people are lying! 
And there's your allegory for the movie right there. Just take a picture with the Lorax on your product and boom, it's suddenly Lorax approved. Ironic this song is against everything corporate when that's exactly what the Lorax marketing was doing. Enjoy your air polluting car. The Lorax says it's okay. How fat and fat and can I be? On top of that, have you noticed that out of the five songs in this movie, only one is pro trees and it's only played at the end? And yes, I know they're being ironic and praising over productivity, but by God, four upbeat modern style pop songs about it and only one? Fucking one song that actually says give a damn about the trees? Don't you see even a little bit of a problem with that? It says the people with the money. People with the money. Make this ever loving world go round. They're not even timeless songs. They all sound like the top 10 from Radio Disney. So as I'm sure you guessed, the Onceler finally chops down the last tree and his business, as well as the forest, is completely gone. The Lorax lifts his ass into heaven, leaving Evil Nick Obvious to be inspired to be the next big tyrant. I wonder what the next million dollar invention's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. And of course, you know how the rest of the story goes. The Onceler gives the boy the last seed and it's left up to him, as well as the children watching, to make the choice on whether or not they'll grow a cleaner and better world. Leaving on a powerfully quiet, emotionally fueled, and subtly ambiguous final note. Yeah, because if there's anything that people were complaining were missing from Dr. Seuss, it was more fucking card chases. Also, we get the big bad corporation trying to take control of the people's minds. <laughs> By God, they're making Hail Hydra sound like a weather-resistant German car. You won't get away with that, boy! Throw in a radical snowboarding granny. Seriously? How cool is your grandma? A tubular scooter that's probably polluting the more times he rides around on it. Seriously, you're just talking. Do you have to ride around in circles like that? And we clearly see the town not over the progression of time and patience, but rather fucking instantly join the boy's side, go out to plant a million trees, and sing another pop song about it. Oh god, people were satirizing it before it even came out. How popular is this song? We even see the Lorax come back. Yep. He comes back, removing all the weight of ambiguity and sense of urgency, and instead gives the kids their happy little ending. You done good, Beanpole. You done good. Aw, isn't that just precious? Say, while you're at it, why don't you just clarify that Bambi's mom never died? Yeah, that was a bit of a downer. Why don't you just clarify that she came back and they all lived happily ever after? Come to think of it, why don't you just reveal whether or not the top falls over in Inception? Or why don't you just tell us what Bill Murray said to Scarlett Johansson? Or give away what was in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Because that's what life is made up of, right? Answers. Easy, non-thought-provoking answers. And we need to prepare kids for just how fucking easy life is going to be. Well, it's not as bad as the Grinch or the Cat in the Hat, and the animation style is colorful and lends its way to Seuss's world better than live action, the Lorax still sucks in capturing the spirit of Dr. Seuss. Instead of being poetic, it panders to the mainstream. Instead of having it speak to everyone, it paints extremes that alienates the truth of the story. And instead of being dark and subtle, it knocks you on the head with its message, ironically making it far less memorable. 